Here's our top five compact sedans. Welcome to the Motor Mouth YouTube channel. I'm Zach. I'm Andrea. And we have our top five compact sedans, not from five to number one. We just do them in alphabetical order mm -hmm. because one might be right for one person and another one for another person. Yeah, you might prefer one because it has better fuel economy, more space versus another, a better starting price. So there's a lot of things that people are looking for, different needs and wants. Let's get into it. Up first is the Honda Civic. It got a new design, interior, exterior, and I think that it looks really great. I like the direction that Honda is going with their design. But they're putting the price up, mm -hmm. especially in the Canadian market. Interestingly, the Honda Civic was the best-selling passenger vehicle in Canada for 20 years, yep. and this past year, it didn't make the top-selling vehicle, and I think a big part of it is they really put the price up. We're going to get into that in a moment. I agree with you, Andrea. I like the design, where they're going. And the interior design was so popular in the Civic that Honda has used it for every model. I like that wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is available. I find that the Civic is quite comfortable. It's great to drive. It kind of feels a bit sporty and it has lots of space. Yeah, so if you're somebody that wants to buy a Honda Civic mm -hmm. and keep it long term, the base two liter normally aspirated engine is bulletproof. It's been around for a long time. Yeah. If you want something a little bit more powerful, but uh, the long term reliability might not be the same as the base engine is the 1.5 turbo yeah. and it is a little bit more fun. Both engines are matched to a CVT and only front wheel drive. The base engine is a two liter four cylinder with 158 horsepower and 138 pound feet of torque. The second, the 1.5 liter turbo four cylinder with 180 horsepower and 177 pound feet of torque. The more powerful engine is only available on the top model. A hybrid is coming, but no information has been released on that model yet. Here's the pricing for Canada. We'll do the U.S. in a second. You can see the price is high. The LX starts at just under $29,000, and the top Touring model is just over $35,000. In the United States, the base Sport model is just over $25,000, and the most expensive Touring is just over $30,000. Here's the fuel economy for the base 2-liter 4-cylinder, 7.7 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 6 liters on the highway. That's 31 miles per gallon city, 40 miles per gallon highway. The 1.5-liter turbo engine gets 7.6 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 6.1 on the highway. That's 31 miles per gallon city, 38 miles per gallon highway. The warranty is three years, 60,000 kilometers, or 36,000 miles. Up next is the Hyundai Elantra. This is the one with the sharpest looking design. Mm -hmm. And when we say sharp, we mean lots of sharp creases and angles on it. Now, it's not everybody's cup of tea, no. but the more I've seen it on the road, the more I've kind of gotten used to it. What do you think of the way it looks? I don't love it, but I think it looks really good with the N badging. There's something about that N model that I like, and even the N line. But I think the base model, I don't know, it just doesn't do it for me. It's just too angular. All right, and there's one weird thing on the inside. Mm -hmm. To the left of the driver, there's this circle eye thing that looks at you. If you get the hybrid model, that's where it shows the drive modes, mm -hmm. but on other models, it's just a decorative feature and it's really quite strange. One great thing about this Hyundai is that it has a variety of powertrains, including the hybrid that Zach mentioned, and it gets good fuel economy. I also like the space. The second row legroom is quite large in this category. Yeah, it's the biggest, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, 38 and, inches. And a huge trunk as well. Mm -hmm. As we said at the beginning, one vehicle might be right for one person and not for another. So if you're somebody that puts a priority on space, this might be the model for you. Mm -hmm. And it also comes with standard wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. And Hyundai does a really nice job of making their interiors look modern and futuristic, mm -hmm. uh, functional at the same time, except for the eyeball on the left. Uh, but overall, this is a very practical car with good value as mm -hmm. well. This Hyundai is a front-wheel drive model and has many powertrain options, as we mentioned. The base engine is a 2-liter 4-cylinder matched to a CVT, 147 horsepower and 132 pound-feet of torque. The Elantra N-Line has a 1.6-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder with a 7-speed dual-clutch transmission, 201 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque. 
The more fuel efficient Elantra Hybrid has a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder with a six speed Eco Shift dual clutch transmission, a combined 139 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque. Now, the top dog is the powerful Elantra N with a two liter turbo four cylinder and a six speed manual transmission or an available eight speed dual clutch. 276 horsepower and 289 pound feet of torque. Premium fuel is recommended for this model. So the N gets an independent rear suspension. The regular models or the less powerful models get what's called a torsion beam or solid axle at the back. So that performance model really is performance oriented. And you'll also notice that the six speed manual transmission is no longer available on any of the other models except that high performance model. Here's the fuel economy for the two liter four cylinder, 7.6 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 5.7 on the highway. That's 33 miles per gallon city, 42 miles per gallon highway. The hybrid gets great fuel economy at 4.8 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 4.5 on the highway. That's 49 miles per gallon city, 52 miles per gallon highway. The base four cylinder starts at just under $23,000 and the hybrid is just $29,000. If you want the N, that's just over $40,000. In the United States, the base four cylinder is just over $20,500 and the high performance N is just under $33,000. Hyundai offers a warranty of five years or 100,000 kilometers, 60,000 miles. In the U.S., complimentary maintenance is covered for three years or 36,000 miles. Well, we're kind of halfway through. So far, we've had sort of the gold standard, the Honda Civic, yep. then one with a lot of different engine and trim choices. That's the Elantra. And now we get into maybe the value leader. What is it, Andrea? It's the Nissan Sentra. This one has got a lot of great value. In Canada, it even comes with a manual transmission, not anymore in the US, unfortunately. One con is that the fuel economy in this model is just not as good as some of its competitors. And the back seat is not as big as, say, the first two, the Civic and the Elantra. Yeah. But as an overall package, this thing is a killer deal. It looks good. That's a big thing. You like the way it looks, or I want the car to look good. Uh, I like the simple and easy to use interior. Mm -hmm. The manual transmission's a plus, and you don't have to get the base model to get the manual. They have a higher trim spec with the manual. And the reason is they use this for a racing series in Canada mm -hmm. called the Centra Cup, and that's why they're promoting it. Yeah, I think overall, this is a really good deal. We recommend the Centra quite a bit. I think that you will find it to offer a lot of value, yet the space is good as well. The Sentra comes with a two liter four cylinder engine matched to a CVT with 149 horsepower and 146 pound feet of torque. This is a front wheel drive only model. There is a six speed manual transmission as we mentioned in Canada. It's available on the base and SR trims. When Nissan updated this latest Sentra, they added independent rear suspension to all trims, which makes it a great driver's car. Here's the pricing. We'll start with Canada first and then move on to the U.S. The base six-speed manual transmission starts at just over $20,500. And the top trim is just over $28,000 in Canada. In the U.S., the base trim starts at just under $20,000 and the top trim is just over $23,500. Here's the fuel economy, eight liters per 100 kilometer city, six on the highway. That's 29 miles per gallon city, 39 miles per gallon highway. Nissan offers a warranty of three years, 60,000 kilometers or 36,000 miles. Up next is the Toyota Corolla. It has a great hybrid option with excellent fuel economy and believe it or not, plenty of power. Yeah, it's not bad with yeah. the hybrid. Uh, updated for this year, they added wireless Apple and wireless Android yeah. and they ditched the manual transmission. Nobody really bought many of the manual transmissions. Mm -hmm. uh, they've left that just for the high performance hatchback called the GR Corolla. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is just like the Civic, kind of the gold standard. We get asked often for somebody that's buying their very first car yep. and they want to keep it for a long time. The Civic and the Corolla are always kind of top of mind. Some negatives about the Corolla, the infotainment system when using wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is a little bit glitchy. And also the Corolla rear legroom is smaller than many of its competitors. 
Now, the nice thing is that's just been updated for this year is the hybrid, which a lot of people want an economy car to be yeah. economical, that means less fuel, they've expanded the hybrid options. They used to only sell one trim that was really quite basic. Now they've expanded it to all kinds of different trims. So you can have something that even looks a little bit sporty and is a hybrid. And the good news is now there's an all wheel drive option when all of these vehicles that we're mentioning are all front wheel drive models. So the Corolla for the hybrid has an all wheel drive option now which I think is great. It's called an e all-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. It's got a small electric motor at the back that drives the rear wheels. It does it at lower speeds up to about 70 kilometers an hour which is about 45 miles an hour. Um, so it's giving you some extra grip and traction but it's not at all speeds. It's there to help no. you. There are people that have Toyotas with this system and they would like it to be more of an all-wheel drive vehicle at all speeds. The Corolla sedan has two powertrain options. The hybrid has a 1.8 liter four cylinder matched to an eCVT with Toyota's hybrid synergy drive, a combined 138 horsepower. The gas model, a two liter four cylinder matched to a CVT with 169 horsepower. Here's the pricing in Canada for the gas model. It starts at just $25,500 and goes up to just over $33,000. If you want the hybrid, the base front wheel drive starts at just under $29,000 and the top all wheel drive hybrid is just over $37,000. In the U.S., the two-liter four-cylinder starts at just over $21,500, and the top trim is just over $26,500 U.S. The hybrid, the front-wheel drive model, starts at just under $23,000, and the top XLE, which is actually a front-wheel drive model, not all-wheel drive, is just over $26,500 U.S. Here's the fuel economy for the gas model. It's 7.6 liters per 100 kilometer city, 5.9 on the highway. That's 31 miles per gallon city, 40 miles per gallon highway. The hybrid is rated at 5 liters per 100 kilometers in the city and 5.7 on the highway. That's 47 miles per gallon in the city, 41 on the highway. Toyota offers a warranty of three years or 60,000 kilometers, 36,000 miles. In the U.S., complimentary scheduled maintenance is offered for two years or 25,000 miles. Well, we're almost at the end of the alphabet. We're at V for Volkswagen with the Jetta. And you might be surprised, this vehicle actually has a lot to offer. Yeah, not only does it have great fuel economy, but it is spacious and it is comfortable. And also it has a great starting price point. Manual transmission, mm -hmm. if you're looking for that. Um, one thing is, uh, it has a torsion beam rear suspension at the back, which is not independent, unless you get the high performance GLI model. But you know what? It's surprisingly planted and yeah. a nice car, manual transmission's fun. And the great thing is the new updated 1.5 liter turbo, that's right, this one gets a turbo as the base engine, is incredibly fuel efficient mm -hmm. on the highway. Mm -hmm. Some negatives about the Jetta, the suspension is quite soft, the steering is very light. So I think that you have to kind of prepare yourself for that for long drives is going to be extremely comfortable but I wouldn't say that it's as engaging as I had hoped for. Andrea you could just get the GLI version mm -hmm. that's, that's more engaging. True. with and the, the manual. And the great thing about the GLI is you can get the dual clutch transmission the manual transmission and it comes really just one price you pick yeah. your color and your transmission and that's really it and it's a, a really good price for a higher performance Jetta. Yeah. So the Jetta has a lot going for it. Yeah, I think for styling it's a little bit plain. Frumpy. But over, Frumpy. Yeah. <laughs> Frumpy. But overall, I think the packaging is very good and that's why it made our list. Let's get into the specs. The Jetta has a 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder with a standard six speed manual transmission or an available eight speed automatic transmission. 158 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque. This is a front wheel drive only model. The higher performance GLI model has a two liter turbocharged four cylinder with either a six speed manual or seven speed dual clutch transmission, 228 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. This is also front wheel drive. The good news is this higher performance model runs on regular gas. Here's the pricing. We'll do Canada first and then the United States. The base model in Canada is just under $26,000 and the most expensive GLI model is $35,500. If you want the automatic transmission, it's $1,400 more. 
In the United States, the base model starts at just under $22,000, and the top GLI model is $31,500. Here's the fuel economy for the automatic. 7.7 .7 litres per 100 kilometres in the city, 5.7 on the highway. That's 31 miles per gallon city, 41 miles per gallon highway. Volkswagen offers a warranty of four years or 80,000 kilometers, 50,000 miles. In the U.S., complimentary maintenance is covered for two years or 20,000 miles. Interestingly, the Jetta on the highway, one of the reasons it made our list, is the same fuel economy as the Toyota Corolla hybrid on the mm -hmm. highway at 5.7 liters per 100 kilometers. Who would have thunk that? And I think that that's really what it comes down to. When you take a look at these five vehicles that we've put out, whether you do highway driving or city driving, you know, I think that's going to dictate as well which one you choose. If you need more space, if you're putting car seats in the back or boosters, um, you might find that the Elantra is the best choice. The Civic is also quite a large sedan. Maybe wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is important to you. So so that's why we just put it in alphabetical order. Everyone has different needs and different wants and we'd love to hear from you. And the other thing is some people forget that compact cars ha offer great fuel economy, mm. much better than SUVs. Yeah. They just slide through the air with so much ease and that really reduces your fuel cost. So if you've got an eye on the pumps, a compact car can deliver a lot of room, a lot of features and not too expensive. And we have a Honda Civic with the base engine and I've got to tell you, Every time I get in that vehicle, I think to myself, oh, it's so great to get into a sedan. Now, let's get into our honorable mentions. There's two great ones. The Mazda 3. It has a 2.5 liter four cylinder with a six speed automatic transmission, 186 horsepower and 186 pound feet of torque. Front wheel drive and all wheel drive options are available. A turbocharged 2.5 liter four cylinder is another option with up to 250 horsepower and 320 pound feet of torque, standard all wheel drive. And finally, a two liter four cylinder with a standard six speed manual, available six speed automatic transmission, 155 horsepower and 150 pound feet of torque. This is only a front wheel drive model. This is the only trim that has a manual transmission. In the U.S., the manual is no longer an option on the sedan. Now, the next one is the cousin to the Hyundai. And you're wondering, well, why wouldn't it make the list? Well, Hyundai offers it with a hybrid. Yeah. Kia doesn't. It's the Forte, and it has two engine choices, a two-liter four-cylinder with a CVT, 147 horsepower, and 132 pound-feet of torque. There is an optional, more powerful 1.6-liter turbo four-cylinder with a seven-speed dual clutch, 201 horsepower, and 195 pound-feet of torque. The Forte is sold only as a front-wheel drive model. There is a six-speed manual transmission available on the base model in Canada, but not in the United States. However, the U.S. does get a manual transmission on the top GT trim with the turbocharged engine, and that's not available in Canada. So there you have it, our top five compact sedans and a few honorable mentions. I thought that the Mazda 3, you know, it's just such a great sedan, but it doesn't always offer the room, unfortunately, mm -hmm. that some of these other offer. Yeah, the back seat is tight and the mm -hmm. trunk isn't as big and uh, it's not the most fuel efficient. Just but a lot fun. Of, yeah, and, and good power is yeah. available. All right, so which one would you choose and why? Type below, let us know what you think and what else do they need to do? Well, you've got to subscribe, hit that notification bell. We put out a lot of content each week and we'd love you to follow along. Also, follow along on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea. And when will we see them next? We'll see you next time.